the Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Good evening, this is Ronald Coleman. Oh, Benita Coleman. Inviting you to join us again on the campus of Ivy College. Welcome again to Ivy. Ivy College, that is, in the town of Ivy, USA. It's a well-known fact that the residence of Dr. William Todd Hunter Hall, president of Ivy, and his wife, Victoria, is always open house, the keeping of which is a minor miracle. Through circumstances beyond their control, the Halls lost their housekeeper, Penny, last year. So now it's with great relief that they have at last found a replacement, the highly recommended and notably efficient Miss Louisa Tate. Toddy, the house is spotless. Everything is where it should be. I can't find a thing. It's all very confusing. Yes, I know. I anticipated the dangers of immaculate order, so I left a large, clearly lettered sign on my desk. Do not touch. (laughs) She didn't. And for one so painstaking and thorough, it must have required the greatest restraint. It did. I was in here when she was dusting. She looked up at me and smiled knowingly and said, Well, everybody's different. (laughs) Almost the first thing you notice about our Miss Tate is that she speaks in confounding but crisp crypticisms. How is that again? Uh, Let it go, darling. I wouldn't dare try it again. (laughs) Uh, But the fact remains that Miss Tate does have a remarkable sense of verbal economy. She's like a squirrel storing up her words for a long winter. Uh, her brain works so fast, her tongue is given up trying to catch it. Yet she passed me in the hall yesterday and said, the ink spots won't come out and left. Well, I thought at first she was trying to book a radio singing act into some local club. <laughs> <laughs> and then I realized that Lena had brought back my dress. <laughs> <laughs> it's really very flattering, I suppose, Vicky. She just assumes that we know what she's thinking. <laughs> which is going to be a constant challenge to our telepathic powers. Maybe she has Ivy confused with Duke University, uh, where the study of extrasensory perception is, I'm told... um, uh, I'll get it, Vicky. Why? Uh, Why? Well, the front door is just... Oh, oh, of course, I forgot. We have Miss Tate now. (laughs) Uh, That's good. Now I can get to work. Uh, Professor Underhill of the chemistry department wants my opinion on another article he's written for the pedagogical journal. Uh, This one has an exciting title. It's called Syntheses and Reactions of Substituted Cyclohexanones. Oh, my dear. Yes, I I can't wait to get my teeth into it. Uh, I wonder who that is at the door. Well, the easiest way to find out is to ask Miss Tate. Uh, Oh, Miss Tate, would you come in here, please? Probably nothing important, but one likes to know, that's all. Yes, Mrs. Hall. Miss Tate, who is that at the front door? Eggs. Hmm? After all, what's the back door for? Is that all, Mrs. Hall? Well, yeah, yes, yes. I can't think of anything else. <coughs> and if you'll excuse me. Of course, most people like them tucked in. <laughs> I hope your curiosity is satisfied now, darling. Like them tucked in. <laughs> I wonder if that was a deliberate ellipsis, a simple dislocation, or a calculated circumlocution. Yeah, you're not making any more sense than she did. <laughs> yeah, but Vicky, how do you tuck in an egg? <laughs> About that part, you don't. I told her this morning when she was making your bed that you didn't like your covers tucked in at the bottom. Oh. Well, she made no comment at the time, but... Apparently, it's still on her mind. I guess she broods about things. No. No, I think it's a kind of verbal shorthand. Oh. Uh, eggs. Uh, that must have been Calhoun Gaddy who was delivering them. Oh. And if eggs mean Calhoun, then the back door obviously means that she told him to use the tradesman's entrance in the future. Oh, dear. We'll have to explain to Calhoun. Well, we'll have to explain to Miss Tate that he's a friend of ours. And even if he weren't, The back door in this house is used primarily for egress. And if I may digress, since I still haven't oiled the hinges, it's a squeaky egress. (laughs) Squeaky egress? I haven't thought of him in years. (laughs) Him? 
Now, Vicky, you could not have I known did. any... I did, I did, though. I mean, of course, his real name was Alistair Megris, but he was in a show with me, and we all called him Squeaky. And he... <laughs> you don't believe me, do you? <laughs> My darling, to love is to believe. <laughs> to believe is to... Is to what? Um... I'll table that for the moment and gird my mental loins so that I can decode Miss Tate's cryptic report on our next visit. <laughs> yes? Excuse me, Dr. Hall. Now he says he's a student. Well, he is. With that accent? Quod era demonstrandum. I beg your pardon. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I, I made a proposition to my wife, uh, Miss Tate, and you have just demonstrated the proof of it. His name is Calhoun Gaddy. But the eggs... But he is a student, Miss Tate. He's been delivering eggs to our door ever since he entered Ivy as a freshman last semester. Well, he has an open face. <laughs> <laughs> and every door in our home is always open to him, and the windows, if necessary. <laughs> Very well, Dr. Hall. Must be almost 40. I'll show him in. No, no, never mind. Calhoun, come in, come in. Oh, howdy, Doc, Miss Hall. I, I just come visiting. <laughs> well, about time. Yes. Now, I was here a little bit ago, Miss Hall, but that new cleaning lady you got took me for a stranger paddling. She swole up like a toad in a horse track. <laughs> so I just went away and put on my other hat and... Come back social this time. Uh, our Miss Tate apparently functions on a simple association of ideas. With her, eggs were inseparable from back doors. I hope you weren't offended. Oh, I don't mind, Doc. But well, down Sabuga, you mostly can't tell the difference between front and back anyhow. <laughs> Depends on where the shade is and where the pigs ain't. <laughs> to notice where the paths wore down the hearty. <laughs> Tate is new, Calhoun, and she's still adjusting herself. Oh, she seems real nice, Miss Hall. She don't talk much, but uh, sometimes from her eyes I did receive fair, speechless messages. <laughs> if you don't mind my leaning on Shakespeare so early in the morning. <laughs> oh, no, it's good. Good, Calhoun. Merchant of Venice. An excellent description of Miss Tate. But, um, uh, uh, how about this one? She speaks... Yet she says nothing. What of that? Her eye discourses, I will answer it. Oh, aha, uh -huh. it's Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. And we thought her eyes had lost her tongue. Twelfth night, act two, scene two. <laughs> oh, Calhoun, I'm sure you're the only man alive who delivers Shakespeare with his eggs. <laughs> well, what have you been doing with yourself, Calhoun? We haven't had much chance to talk lately. Yeah, I missed it too, Doc, but I've been busier than a feisty flea working his way through a dog show. <laughs> I, um, I found out what that buzzing in my head was about. Doc, my budget was unbalanced. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. I assumed that your egg root was taking care of the present requirement. Oh, my hens is doing all right by me, but like my uncle Asian always says, it's a mighty poor bee that don't make more honey than he needs himself. Oh, yes. Well, your uncle Asian was... Probably thinking of his hot biscuits when he said it. <laughs> well, hot biscuits notwithstanding, we're poor indeed if we don't try to do more than just subsist. It's the surplus, the honey which sweetens our lives. A bee is a wise insect. It knows that being in clover is a means and not an end. Oh, that's right. And, Doc, when you've got a pretty wife like mine, Glory, who shouldn't be satisfied with just nothing and singing... And five little bitty old tadpoles that are just itching to be jumping frogs any day, you need plenty of honey. <laughs> oh, yeah, in your case, honey is money. <laughs> yes, ma'am, Miss Hall, that's putting it plain. That's how come I started on my new project. New project? Yes, sir. See, down a ways, just a hoop and a holler from my boathouse, there was this piece of land that was just doing nothing. Just wasting away. Oh, Calhoun, don't tell me that with everything else you're doing, you've started a farm. Oh, I got help, Miss Hall. It started out to be just a patch for garden sass, but then some of the fellas in my class come out to watch me. Now we got us a kind of a farm combine. Everybody working and everybody sharing to help pay the way through Ivy. I like to work with growing things, whether it's kids or corn. Uh oh, you got company and I got a class. Well, you'll come again soon, won't you? Oh, you're mighty kind, Doc. And like that man Thoreau said, I wouldn't talk so much about myself if there was anybody else I knew as well. <laughs> well you get 
this will be awful. Excuse me, Dr. Hall, but he's got such an excited face. Excited face. Mm. Oh, oh, yes, <laughs> that will be Mr. Wellman. Is he a student, too? Don't you have any young ones? Uh, I, uh, I should have explained to you about Mr. Wellman and Miss Tate. Please have him come in. Yes, Dr. Hall. Well, I better hide till it on out of here. Bye, Fo. Well, goodbye, goodbye, Calhoun. Goodbye, Calhoun. Howdy, Mr. Wellman. Well, so long, Mr. Wellman. <laughs> yes, I might have known, keeping me waiting and my business. What was my business? <laughs> Dr. Hall, who is that? That woman. That, Mr. Wellman, is a mistake. A mistake? I should think so. <laughs> Leaving me cooling my halls in the heel. I mean, <laughs> heaving my tools in the hall. I mean, good morning, Mrs. Heel. Oh. <laughs> good morning, isn't it, Mr. Wellman? Uh, Mrs. Hall, I have the time to look at scenery. I came to see you, Dr. Hall, because I, I wanted to tell you a matter of utmost urgency, an issue which must be met with dispatch. A chairman of the Board of Governors, I feel that... Uh, what particular issue, Mr. Wellman, do you feel that... What, why, uh, uh, naturally, the... Uh, the uh, what was Gaddy doing here, Dr. Hall? I suppose he came to tell you all about that student back to the farm movement. He's raising potatoes on Ivy property. I warned you about Gaddy. I warned you. Hens and eggs and... Who knows what next? Probably pigs. Pigs, Dr. Hall! <laughs> Lower your voice, Mr. Wellman. With the price of bacon these days, we speak of that animal only in hushed and reverent tones. Uh, have you seen any pigsties on Mr. Gaddy's new farming venture, Mr. Wellman? I don't have to. I've seen students in blue jeans. Uh, next thing, they'll be taking their shoes off, like peasants, raising grapes and trampling out... Uh, Dr. Hall, this has got to be nipped in the bud. Well, I'm afraid you'll have to wait till spring for that, Mr. Wellman. Nothing's budded yet. Do I have to remind you that permission for such mutilation of Ivy property would have to be granted by the Board of Governors? No, you don't have to remind me, Mr. Wellman. And now, I know how busy you are. What was it you came to see me about this morning? This morning? Uh, this morning? Well, uh... Isn't that funny? Uh, no, it isn't funny. It, 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 it couldn't have been important. And after all, seeing Gary here, no, no, no wonder I... What was it I came to see you about, Dr. Hall? Oh, I'm afraid I can't help you there, Mr. Wellman. Why not? What's the matter? Weren't you listening? <laughs> I usually state my business the minute I come in. Uh, but, Mr. Wellman... Just don't you forget Gary, because I won't. Well... Uh, goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Mrs. Hall. Goodbye, goodbye Mr. Wellman. Mr. Wellman. Uh, well, well, what did I come here for? It, it must have been... No, it wasn't! <laughs> now we'll take a human trait in Mr. Wellman, a lapse of memory. Uh, whatever it was he came for, Calhoun Gaddy has now taken priority over it in his mind. Yeah. And unfortunately, in this matter, Mr. Wellman is right. If Calhoun's project is on university property. That may cause complications. Yes, you'll have to get the approval of the Board of Governors, and I'm afraid that might be difficult. They're conscientious custodians. Yes. Yeah. And even if he does get it, he and his friends won't be able to operate their project and make any profit out of it. Not as a private venture. All that energy and enterprise for nothing. Poor Calhoun. No honey and no money. Well... Maybe he can help you to soften Mr. Wellman's heart. He's used to working in frozen ground. Voice of America is bringing you this rebroadcast presentation of The Halls of Ivy, starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. And now to return to Ivy, where Dr. Hall has just come home after making an inspection tour of Calhoun Gaddy's new agricultural development. Oh, it's you, Dr. Hall. You'll find a list of phone calls on your desk. Thank you, Miss Tate. They're all from Mr. Wellman. Oh, well, there you are, William. Hello, darling. Well, that didn't take you long. He called four times, Dr. Hall. He said he remembered, and you would know what he meant by that. Well, I don't, but thank you, Miss Tate. Yes, Dr. Hall. Maybe I'm wrong, but it seems to me that if you don't, the blankets will slip off. <laughs> Your 
covers on her mind, Toddy. Hey, couldn't you change the habits of a lifetime before she develops a dangerous obsession? <laughs> oh, one man's monomania is another man's mere preoccupation. Well, what do you call it when it's a woman? If it's a beautiful woman, I call it Victoria. Well, well thank you. Now, come on, tell me what you found out. I'm getting giddy wondering about Gary. <laughs> well, I, I located Calhoun's project, but it's not on Ivy property. Well, good that he's out of the woods. Mr. Wellman can't touch him. Calhoun has cleared the woods, but in legal parlance, he's committed a trespass, which means that the owner of the property can evict him and confiscate his crops when they're ready for harvest, leaving Calhoun and his energetic friends with only their calloused hands to show for all the work they've done. Oh, he's really caught in a net, isn't he? Thank you, darling. What for? Net. I've been looking for weeks for an opportunity to quote Samuel Johnson's definition of a net. Uh, anything reticulated or decusseted at equal distances with interstices between the intersections. Oh. <laughs> You'll bring down the house if you work that into your homecoming speech. Yes, on my way coming home today, I stopped at the Ivy Title Company and they're instituting a title search. What, for your homecoming speech? I bet you can think of better titles than they can. I, I didn't mean that. We, we've got to find out who owns the land that Calhoun's farming. Oh. Oh. and try to forestall any further complications. Uh, he started the kind of cooperative activity that I'd like to encourage. Well, I think it's wonderful. If you have to work your way through college, this sounds like a nice, healthy way to do it. Yes. After talking with some of his confederates, I realize that Calhoun has been planting seeds in mines as well as the soil, and good, fertile seeds, too. Shakespeare, Emerson, Thoreau. Yes, his farm has become a kind of Walden a retreat for young men and women who want to put their hands in the earth after having their heads in the clouds for so many hours. Well, the campus fad, a, a tractor is much more sensible than a hot rod and it's just as nice and noisy. Mm -hmm. I mean, after all... Excuse me, darling. Yeah, hello, Dr. Hall speaking. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Tuttle. Uh, yes, did you, uh, did you find out who has title to that property? What? Oh, ho, ho, ho. <laughs> yes, well, uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, goodbye, Mr. Tuttle. Mr. Tuttle? Uh, yes, darling, that was Mr. Tuttle of the Tittle Company. I mean the title. <laughs> very confusing. He should either take a position with a gas company or change his name to McGillicuddy. <laughs> which is momentarily drained from your face and has now happily returned. I gather it was bad news. Well, who owns the property? The who is bad news? Oh, no, it's not possible. Mr. Wellman? <laughs> oh. yes, the, the impossible Mr. Wellman. Vicky, all we can do for Calhoun now is cushion the shock. <laughs> Doc, if I'd known you was going out to look over my project, I'd have put a clean shirt on my scarecrow. <laughs> Up to now, he's been uh, strictly for the birds. <laughs> well, it was, it was an unexpected expedition, Calhoun. It, it suddenly became necessary for me to determine the exact location of your enterprise. Uh-oh. Sounds like there's a storm blowing up. Yes, a one-man hurricane. Well, Mr. Wellman was concerned with what he described as a, a mutilation of Ivy property. Oh, for crying in a clapper. I didn't know it was on Ivy, Doc. Well, it isn't on Ivy. It's on private property. True, you've improved it considerably, but I don't know whether that'll make any difference to Mr. Wellman. However, I've asked him to come here this afternoon in the hope that we can solve this problem amiably. Well, I never noticed anything amiable about him, Doc. He's got a disposition at curdle mill. Henri is a borshot and a Bob wire fan. Yeah. <laughs> to misquote that radio commentator Calhoun, there's bad news tonight. <laughs> that property is owned by Mr. Wellman himself. Wow. Now I know what a potato bug feels like when he's just been sprayed. <laughs> so, you see, Calhoun, this is not a university issue, and I've no official reason to intervene. But as an acquaintance of the plaintiff and a friend of the defendant, I felt that we might reach a settlement out of court, so to speak, and uh, that will be Mr. Wellman. 
Ah, it's too bad he doesn't have a branch office on our front porch. Or does he? <laughs> Miss Kate has been alerted. She's at her battle station. Well, down home, this is where you light out for the storm cellar. There's a twister coming. It wasn't necessary for you to call me to tell me to come here, Dr. Hall, because I called you to tell you that I was going to come here because I remembered what I came for this morning and forgot when I got here. Well, good afternoon, Mrs. Hall. Good afternoon. You, Gaddy, again. How's your corporosity, Mr. Wilm? <laughs> And don't think you're going to get away with it, Gabby. It's just as well you are here, so Dr. Hall can hear what I have to say to you. Well, that was the purpose of this meeting, Mr. Wellman. I felt that if we could sit down and discuss the matter... That's nothing to discuss. It's disgusting. I tell you, Gabby, I will not stand for I will not be a party to I will not permit you to de desecrate Ivy. But, Mr. Wellman, that is exactly what Dr. We... Hall, are you in favor of plow plowing Ivy College under? Uh, Mr. Wellman, do you really know what you're talking about? What? I... <laughs> seen this project of Calhoun's? No, and I don't have to. I know all about it. Vegetables everywhere, as far as the eye can. See, it has no place on Ivy Park. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> obviously, you, you don't know all about it, Mr. Wellman. It is not on Ivy property. It that is on... That has nothing to do... Uh, it isn't? Uh, but I distinctly... I, I, I was told, uh, of course it's on. It must be on. Where is it, Dr. Hall? It's on your property, Mr. Wellman. In that case... Uh, what? On my property? Well, yes, near the boathouse. Calhoun's done a remarkable job of improving it, Mr. Wellman. You wouldn't recognize it without with all of those rocks cleared away. That worthless piece of property? Ten years, taxes. Well, I couldn't give it away. My property? Yes, and now that it's been plowed and ready for planting... Why, it might start paying for itself. Uh, yes, 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 Dr. Hall. Uh, you don't have to tell me about farms. Uh, uh, Mr. Gaddy. <laughs> I'm still here, Miss Well. <laughs> well, uh, Mr. Gaddy, I think we two might uh, make some kind of arrangement. Well, now, Mr. Wellman, I have never been a tenant farmer yet. I've seen too much sharecropping to care about it. I don't know. Wait, wait, Mr. Gaddy. I am a great believer in cooperative enterprise, and I feel... Uh, but, but no need to bother Dr. Hall with this now. After all, it's a private matter. Oh, uh, Mr. Wellman, I'm delighted that you approve of what Calhoun and his friends are doing. But I still have certain misgivings. Well, forget them, Dr. Hall. Everything's taken care of. Ah, have you considered the fact that Calhoun and his fellow farmers will only be with us for three more years? Yes, oh. and then there's the prospect of your land becoming a tax burden to you again. Uh, yeah. So it has occurred to us that if the Wellman Gaddy Farm Combine is successful, perhaps it can best be perpetuated by, uh, by deeding the property to Ivy College as an experimental agricultural station. Uh, Dr. Hall, are you suggesting that I... No, I, I just want you to think about it. I don't have to think about it. I can say yes as loud as any man. Yes, Dr. Hall. <laughs> I agree with you. A magnificent idea. I was just about to think of it myself. Uh, Mr. Mr. Wellman, do you know what you're saying? <laughs> Surprised you, didn't I? <laughs> but I'd say no, just on principle. Well, at the, at the Board of Governors meeting yesterday, when I proposed an increase of research assistance in the physics department, you did say no on principle. That's what you said, Mr. Wellman. Of course I said it. And that's just what I came to tell you this morning and this afternoon. And thank you for reminding me. I changed my mind. About the research assistance, that is. Oh, but that's twice in one day, Mr. Wellman. Yeah, I know. I'm having a complete checkup with my doctor in the morning. <laughs> I don't seem to be myself these days. Well, and they don't thank me, Dr. Hall. I'm just as pleased about all this as you are. Well, uh, uh, goodbye, Mrs. Hall. You're looking well. <laughs> Good day, Dr. Hall. Good day. Uh, are you coming, uh, Cal? <laughs> coming, uh, Clarence. <laughs> Come on, Goodbye. 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 <laughs> well, that was the prettiest picture I ever saw of a man trying to scratch his ear with his elbow. <laughs> he didn't even slam the door. Well, after all. Pygmalion made over Galatea and Svengali cast his spell on Trilby. And you, look what you did to Mr. Wellman. Oh, not me, Vicky. Taxes. No, no, it wasn't even that. No, Mr. Wellman too often conceals his virtue in his anxiety to prove it. 
He loves Ivy as much as any of us. Yeah, I know he does, but you must admit he has the oddest ways of showing it. Yes, the trouble is that with him, resisting change is a reflex action. He'll maintain a position even when he knows it's no longer valid. Being tradition-bound is more serious than being muscle-bound. And when you... You know, Vicky, perhaps Miss Tate is right. About what? Perhaps they should be tucked in. <laughs> Well, it, it, it's not defeat to admit you're wrong. Why, Vicky, if Mr. Wellman can haul down his flag, the least I can do is to tuck in my covers. Starring Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Pope. To the house.